let's discuss cellular adaptation, or the cell's response to escape and protect itself from injury. A main goal of the body is to maintain homeostasis, which is the steady state that cells exist in normally. It's an equilibrium of the cells within their environment that allows for adequate function. When this is disturbed, there can be a predisposal for the onset of pathology. However, cells can be adaptable within their physiologic limits. Reversible injury or degeneration can impair cell functions, but cells can recover. Irreversible injury can take one of two forms, apoptosis or programmed cell death, or necrosis, which is the end product of degradative and inflammatory reactions occurring after tissue death. Cells react to stimuli that they come into contact with, and cells can adapt to environmental stimuli by either hypo- or hyperfunctioning. When there is a persistent sublethal injury, cells may react in a number of ways. Sometimes cells respond with reduced cell mass. This can be caused by a number of things, including failure of formation of embryonic cell mass or agenesis, failure of differentiation to organ-specific tissue or aplasia, failure of structural organization of tissues into organs or dysgenesis, failure of organs to grow to full size, which is called hypoplasia, and in response to environmental factors, cells can adapt by decreasing the mass of pre-existing cells, resulting in a decrease in the size of an organ or tissue, and this is called atrophy. Atrophy results most often from disuse, nutritional or oxygen deprivation, diminished endocrine stimulation, aging, and denervation. Examples of atrophy include disuse. Um, an example of a disuse syndrome would be um, an arm in a cast for a long period of time. The muscles not being worked um, within the cast start to atrophy down, become smaller. Another example is bed ulcers or bed sores that come from pressure. Um, there can be a lack of circulating hormones or endocrine factors and this could look like um, atrophied breast tissue after lactation or atrophy of the uterus after menopause. And denervation can occur um, which is damage to axons that supply the muscles. So that lack of stimulation causes a lack of use or disuse. Um, also causing atrophy. Special proteins called heat shock proteins can respond to injuries by producing cell stress proteins to protect the cell from damage and help in its recovery. On a biochemical level, the cells can respond to injury with a few other things. Ubiquitin marks abnormal proteins for degradation and this is produced by the heat shock proteins induced by stress. And chaperones are specialized proteins that are required for proper folding and assembly of another protein or protein complex. An example of a disorder characterized by protein folding abnormalities might be amyloidosis or neurodegenerative diseases such as Alzheimer's or Huntington's where there's abnormal protein aggregations. Um, there could be abnormal protein transport in, or secretion as well, and that might present a cystic fibrosis or alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency. As was mentioned before, um, cells respond to stimuli that they come in contact with and adapt to their environment. They can adapt uh, um, by decreasing in cell size like atrophy, which we discussed, or they can increase either in size of cells or number of cells. Hypertrophy is an increase in the size of an organ or tissue due to an increase in the size of the cells. In contrast, hyperplasia is an increase in the size of an organ or tissue caused by an increase in the number of cells. In these states of adaptation, there is an abnormal stimulus such as increased functional demand, increased work demand, increased metabolic demand, excess endocrine stimulation or persistent tissue injury. In response to the abnormal stimulus, the cells adapt. This adaptive response can be increased cell size, increased cell number, or both, causing hypertrophy, hyperplasia, or both. 
if the abnormal stimulus is, is removed, the cells can respond again and this time reduce their cell size, cell number, and return to normal. In response to um, injury, the body can um, respond with replacement of tissue or it can have deranged cellular growth or abnormal tissue growth as well. So metaplasia is the replacement of one differentiated tissue by another in a hostile environment. So an example of this is squamous metaplasia, where the cells change from columnar ciliated epithelium of the bronchial tree to squamous epithelium, and this is due to the irritant factor of cigarette smoke. This could be reversible um, if one would stop smoking soon enough. Oftentimes we see that that does not happen. Another example is osseous metaplasia, and this is an example where there's formation of new cartilage or bone um, at the site of tissue injury. And you might see this um, in individuals that have dentures that don't fit well. And yet another example is myeloid metaplasia, where there's proliferation of hematopoietic tissue in sites other than the bone marrow, so in the liver or spleen. This might look like hepatosplenomegaly that you could see during a sickle cell anemia crisis. So just to recap, for cellular adaptation, this is the body's response to um, potential injury. Um, it is our natural response to maintain homeostasis. If, if the stimulus that is causing the cellular adaptation abates, or if the cell adapts adequately, the cell can then survive, at least temporarily. However, if the stimulus persists, or the cells fail to adapt, the result is cell injury or death. Okay, so that's the basics of cellular adaptation, and these concepts are going to be following us through all through the pathophysiology course, and we'll be applying these to all kinds of disease states.